welcome to another episode of Agency Automators. Today, we are incredibly lucky to have with us Robin Allenson, the co-founder of Similar.ai. He's been in SaaS for a super long time, been working in SEO for a super long time. Robin, it's so great to finally get our episode taping. How excited is it? How exciting is this? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed, Noah, and uh, thank you for that uh, amazing intro. I'm, I'm normally... Like you know, my my um my only weakness is humility, so that that kind of fits in. But my my only superpower is, is self deprecation, uh, so I'm trying to balance the two by by acknowledging that, but also going like, wow, that was that was too much. Oh please! So uh, we met on Clubhouse, I think, in I don't know February of 2021, and Something I've like incredibly enjoyed all of our conversations where we talked about AI and some of the like more technical machine learning type of work that's happening in in SEO right now. And we've had just a ton of great conversations privately about this. Uh, Your company, Similar.ai, can you tell us a little bit about it and also about your background? Because you've got an amazing background that a lot of SEOs will really dig, I think. So so, uh, I guess the first thing I have to say is like, it's it's amazing uh, to to have this conversation with you. Fully closed, closed in a normal temperature. So normally, uh, so I don't know how much of this you actually knew, but uh, when we're having the clubhouse conversations, I dial in, and I'd normally dial in from. Uh, so I have a sauna in the back garden, um, and yeah. before before the the conversation, I basically bike with some friends of ours and go to a, a local lake and jump in the lake, which is like um, five degree kind of cold water, and uh, and just stay there for for I don't know twenty minutes, half an hour, get out, nearly hypothermia, uh, bike back get in the sauna, uh, get to the point where I'm almost sweating. And then that will be about the time when, when the, um, the, the, the um, SEO uh, Clubhouse conversation came on. So I come in and, and I was basically lurking because I didn't have the, the brains or the, uh, or the speech capabilities <laughs> to, to do anything. And then at some point you would go, oh, Robin, you're here. And I'm like, ah, oh, no. And, I'm like, and, then, and then we get into a conversation. But the conversation would be great, right? So I'd, be, I'd be walking around in a bathrobe in my garden uh, uh, because otherwise if I went to the sauna, I'd just be completely drenched. Um, so I go in and out between the, the the garden and the and the sauna, and that's where all of those those conversations took place. That is amazing. So I had so, to give you that, that little bit of context. So, so I feel like obviously you can only see the upper part of my body, but I can promise you that I am fully dressed, um, and yeah. I'm not you know I'm not an abnormal temperature. Um, yeah. So I'm feeling this is a a great place to start a real conversation. So I'm I'm all into Zoom authenticity, so I can show off the fact that I too am fully clothed. Very exciting. Um, so, um, similar AI, uh, we're a, a product led SEO platform. So, mostly yeah. we're working with teams of uh, product managers, growth product managers, SEO managers who typically work with a, a shared engineering team. Uh, and they're working on the so they're in house SEOs for, uh, for sites uh, where they're deploying um, product. So, uh, to, to deliver on SEO goals. Uh, so, um, they're often working on internal linking projects, um, cleanup projects, content projects, uh, but they're doing it for many of those sites, not all of them, but many of those sites uh, have um, a very, very large, their marketplaces, their classified sites, their affiliate sites, um, uh, and they might have, or I don't know, uh, so some of the customers we're working with have um, nearly a billion uh, web pages on their site. Um, uh, some of them only, only have a few tens of millions or a hundred million. Um, so it's kind of uh, often very, very big sites. And then what they're trying to do is do try to work out of their 25 million or 50 million listings, how do we market those to search engine users, or as we, as we call them nowadays, people. Um, and, and so people are looking online uh, using search queries. And what we're trying to do is match up uh, those products uh, to search queries um, through uh, listing result pages, category pages. Um, and so with the platform that we, uh, that we uh, run and, and uh, that clients use, that basically works out for every page on the website. Uh, it matches that up to uh, groups of, of uh, keywords uh, or topics, as we call them. Uh, so groups of keywords, which um, search engine users would, would expect very similar results um, and works out from that, from that which of those pages don't target uh, any uh, users. So don't target any demand. So those are the kind of pages we, we want to hide. Uh, which of those uh, pages target the same topics? 
Uh, so there's probably a better page on the website somewhere that already answers that topic, so that needs deduping. Um, uh, which pages um, are great? They have listings, they have products, they have demand, uh, the products are relevant, um, but then they deserve to have internal links um, that focus uh, search engine users' attention on, on them um, that go from relevant influential pages. Um, which pages need additional non-templated uh, content? Um, and, and so we, and we deploy that through APIs. So the site that we're working with works with us and um, they uh, integrate with one of our APIs. We have three APIs. One basically uh, does cleanup. So it says this page uh, should be 301 to, to that page, or this page be a, um, a no index, or this page maybe be a, a 410. Um, uh, uh, another uh, API uh, gets called uh, and says, here's a list of anchor text and destination URLs. Um, and uh, those are internal links. Um, and then they render them on, on the page. So uh, the client site is calling us, uh, it's a server-side integration. Um, it takes them typically a, a week or two to, to integrate with us. And then uh, the platform does all the he heavy lifting of telling them basically which pages to remove and which pages to uh, internally link and how to do that. Uh, and in addition, we have uh, content generation. Again, same kind of thing as the internal linking API uh, and it renders the content. It could be frequently asked questions, it could be metadata, it renders that on the page. And so that means that the, uh, the growth product manager can deploy SEO changes uh, that can scale to the whole of the site um, and can do that without touching their engineering team. Uh, so often for them, um, and I think for everybody else in SEO, one of the biggest blockers is, well, we have a list of things we want to do. We know the recommendations. We know what we actually need to do, but we can't get it live on the site, right? Yeah. Uh, so similar AI solves that problem. Um, so you just, you... Um, Leapfrog the, leapfrog the engineering backlog is, is how we call it on the on the new website we just launched uh, to kind of explain uh, what we do. So that's- it Looks great, by the like way. A, a five, thank you very much. It's like a five minute nutshell of kind of what, what we're up to. And it's, and the website is at similar.ai, is that right? That is right. Yeah. I like the new colors. Uh, and I like that there's a lot more content. Yeah, and, and it's kind of, um, I like that the, the content actually describes what we do, uh, which turns out to be another useful uh, kind of aspect of a website. Uh, so previously uh, it described what we were doing, I don't know, two years ago or three years ago um, and um, not really what we do now. Um, but um, like, so most of our customers are coming through inbound or through word of mouth uh, and amazingly kind of come in knowing basically what we do. Um, and, uh, but now, uh, now it's much easier for people who, who haven't heard of us to land on the website. And I also think, uh, and, and work, work that out um, and, and kind of ping us for a demo or uh, to have a chat. Uh, it's also, um, uh, uh, we often describe that we were working with a marketplace. We we're working with a classified site and people would go kind of think, oh, you, you, you only work with marketplaces. Uh, but actually uh, what we're doing works with any, um, any product led SEO team. So if, if, if you're a product manager, you're an in-house SEO, and you have an engineering team, and you're trying to deploy a deploy product, you're trying to um, uh, solve customer goals in order to um, de de deliver on kind of organic business goals, uh, yeah. then, then that's what we built the platform for. Um, and so I've missed out like three or four things that we do, uh, but I, I, I guess we'll probably either get to those in, in this conversation or uh, people are like, well, I'm really, I'm, I'm I'm that kind of person, but we have this kind of problem. Uh, almost certainly, if you if you give me a call and explain what the problem is, uh, we we have a we have a solution for just that. That's amazing. So when we think about, I mean, I love the client list that you're sharing on your site. Can you give us insight into some of the sites that you're working with? Because um, there's yeah. there are some great ones that are public. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so I'm just hoping that none of our customers kind of uh, go and look at the site and go like, oh, you, you, you mm -mm, I'm not sure that's uh, actually. But so, um, uh, so we're working with uh, a bunch of big classifieds in the UK and in Germany uh, with uh, some fashion uh, retailers, um, uh, some of which are shown on the site. Um, we're working with, uh, yeah, so there's a, a great um, uh, um, recreation vehicle uh, kind of uh, sharing a company called RV Share. Uh, yeah. And so we're big fans of, and that's a marketplace for uh, RV, um, RVs. 
Um, and um, uh, so we're working with them. Uh, and there's some nice quotes from, from their uh, VP of marketing kind of talking about why they chose us and how we help them. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's the, uh, the, the list of clients that we work with are not clients that I would have dreamed of ever landing. Um, yeah. So they're, they're kind of, uh, uh, and they came to us and we were able to solve a lot of their problems. And that was, that's been enormously gratifying. Uh, but it's also partly, I think, uh, uh, in a way, we're not an SEO company. So, yeah. uh, so we're, we're, we're a search company. We're solving, we're enabling organic to scale like paid search does. Um, and, and so we're not selling into uh, to clients that typically the SEO companies would sell into. Um, and so that's kind of like, I think it's uh, to do what we do at the scale at which we do it um, isn't possible solely with, uh, with people, right? So you need a platform. Uh, so it's kind so of a, a different, different kind of company. I'm hearing, and we've talked about this a lot. I mean, like you historically have had a pretty major e-com focus. Um, is it, could you help publishers like I had not worked with publisher sites before the last year. And what I didn't understand was just how short the lifespan is for publisher content and how fast pages, you know, they're like crazy steep peaks and super fast declines. Is that, yeah. is that a problem area that you've ever wanted to, to tackle so that instead of having like a three day shelf life for an article, you can extend that out for a couple of days. Do you think that you could help with that with your internal linking tooling? Uh, so, yeah. So I think um, if you look at uh, the kind of uh, popularity across the customer base and across kind of uh, folks we, we, we think we could sell into for the different tools, then one piece is, is we've built a very robust and sensitive um, uh, experimentation, experimentation platform. Uh, mm -hmm. so we can do a B testing. Um, and, uh, within that we can look at a big, we call it a segment of pages, maybe a hundred thousand, a million pages. And we can look at, yes. um, uh, going down from, um, from the, the top of the funnel, we call it a funnel, uh, from how many pages of those pages has the Google, Googlebot crawled. Um, and then next down is, um, how many of those pages are indexed? How many of those pages are, are, are ranked? How many keywords do they rank for? Um, how many impressions? What's the number of keywords? What's the total traffic? Ultimately, how much revenue? So that's the whole funnel. But what you see is the really big sites that uh, the vast majority of pages that you care about, um, uh, so maybe you call those money pages, um, the vast majority <laughs> of those, those pages that you care about, um, Google's never crawled them. Google's never found them, right? Uh, so just getting Google to crawl those, is that's kind of top of funnel kind of work. Um, and then going down deeper in, how do you get them to actually, uh, how do you demonstrate to Google that, that really the focus of the site is really around these pages uh, and you really want Google's attention on those so that it goes all the way down to revenue. And I think that's a, uh, that's a universal problem. Uh, that's not something that's specific to marketplaces or to affiliate sites, to travel sites, or to classifieds. I think it's true for, and it doesn't matter whether you have product listings or whether you've got content. Um, and then the kind of next stage up, yeah, uh, internal linking is super useful for, for lots of those things. What's different about our internal linking is not what we do do. Uh, so we're linking out to these pages. Um, uh, one differentiation is we correlate the number of inlinks with demand. Uh, that's because the platform knows what uh, demand every page has. So uh, typically in SEO, we think of, well, I built a crawler and that tells me page level data. Maybe it tells me about what's going on on, on the page. Um, and I've got keyword research and keyword data and demand data. Um, and I've also got uh, topic clustering. And I've also got, I don't know, uh, knowledge graph stuff. And I've also got, so what we're doing with the platform is we put all of that together. And we do that at a page level. So at a page level, you know how many, you know, which keywords this page ranks for and which keywords it could rank for and all of the search volume and all the other CPC and all the other data about those keywords. So at a page level, you know um, how valuable that, that page should be, what the traffic opportunity is for that page. Um, and we do that for all of the pages on the site. So that means that on top of that, we can layer on things like, hey, we'd like to internally link to these pages that get no traffic today, but they should. 
right? And and so that's a kind of missing piece in in why well, I, I think in in SEO platforms, um, you want a, a, a kind of a single comprehensive view of all of your pages because you don't take actions on on keywords, you take actions on pages, right? So every page you'd have this this view, so you can decide what to do. Um, but then um, the internal linking is powerful, but uh, it's that we don't link to um, duplicates. We don't link to pages that don't have demand, right, ever. Um, and so it's a, our ability to focus um, the internal linking around effectively a big, sub, a smaller subset of the total pages, which are the, which are the money pages, right? Either the pages that are making the money now or the, uh, the pages that can make the money in the future. Um, but then uh, for publishers, going back to the original question, uh, so publishers, uh, one of the things we're doing um, with one of our customers today, um, so well, so uh, we update content uh, as well as internal links. So we have a content API that updates. Uh, we generate uh, frequently asked questions. We generate um, uh, title, meta descriptions. Uh, and then we, we look at the, uh, the impact of that. So we're doing that kind of rigorous A-B testing across hundreds of thousands of pages. Um, uh, but uh, we, we do smaller content experiments. Um, and um, we're also looking at how we can use really big language models, uh, kind of uh, GPT-3s of the world. Um, uh, but rather than us generating the content uh, with those models, there are lots of agencies that do those kind of things. Uh, we're looking at how we generate um, the, the input uh, to those models to say, here's what to write about. Here's the, the, the facts that you should focus on. Um, here are the, um, the words that people would search for the most when they're looking for the, those pages. Uh, so those models can write about, uh, write more accurately and more informatively. Um, and then the idea is that we could plug that together with this, this end-to-end -end flow. So we can say, hey, we've got these pages, they deserve more, the, the, the ranking is dropping uh, and has been dropping over time. We haven't updated them in so many months. Uh, we're going to give it a content refresh, uh, but fully automate that. So we can say these 10,000 pages deserve a content refresh. We're going to give them a bunch of data. Um, AI is going to write, write the, the content. And then we're going to see what the impact is of updating those pages, but not these other control group of pages. Uh, we see what the impact is on, on average ranking, as an example. Um, and then rinse and repeat. Uh, so that's, that's one yeah. of the things we're doing for publishers. I, I, I would love to understand how you're like, what inputs are you using to calculate demand? Is it first party, like internal search volume? Is it, are you layering it on with like GSC impression data or like Ahrefs or keyword planner? Cause that's, that's super. Yes. Easy. The answer Just is all yes. the <laughs> I know Robin. Um, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Jordan, that's, that's an awesome question. Um, so basically, um, so there's kind of, uh, uh, there's kind of three or four bits. So one is uh, we need uh, keywords. Um, so for, for some customers, um, they're primarily interested in getting um, uh, first party keywords from, from Search Console. Um, and I think today, um, uh, well, I, I guess we all know that the, the keywords you get back through the API um, are richer than the keywords you have in, in the user interface. Um, Let's get into this in a couple minutes. I want to. I want to go deep but, into that topic. So, nah, it's, it's not that interesting. But then, so, I think um, it's, but, <laughs> what? Well, maybe. I mean, like, but I mean, what if you had all the keywords that Google had on your site? I mean, and you you had a really big site. What would you use all the keywords for? And all the all the position data and all of it. I mean, like, um, I can't see, think of any useful use cases for taking all the keyword data, especially if you're working with, you know, you, you have that for a, a really big site. Oh, actually, now, now I come to think of it. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, there's probably lots of applications of using all the keywords. Yeah, I, so um, so we, we can get into that. Um, so we, we get GSC data, um, like I think everybody does, uh, but we're really, we've been obsessed with basically trying to get all of the keyword data uh, that we can get for very big sites. Uh, which uh, is kind of is hard, uh, but I think is um, uh, is possible. Um, and and then um, uh, we get competitive data, uh, so we have a, a, an API uh, with SEMrush, um, 
uh, you can get uh, competitive data elsewhere, but you can, so anywhere that's kind of pulling in keywords and search volume um, uh, from Google Keyword Planner. Um, uh, and then um, we dedupe those uh, so we make sure we only have uh, the right uh, keywords. But basically what we're trying to do is at say for, um, for a fashion customer in the US, we're trying to work out what are all the possible queries that people could use in the US uh, who are looking to buy clothing or looking to buy bags or looking to buy shoes or looking to buy things you wear on your body or what are all the possible keywords for uh, if you're looking to um, uh, buy um, a vehicle in Germany. Um, and so we we get those kind of um, the complete uh, keywords for a domain and a market. Uh, so typically that's, that's uh, in the US, that's a few million keywords. Um, and then we group those into topics. Um, uh, so that we have a, a good understanding of of um, what are the uh, what the underlying user needs for for a, a group of keywords where users would really expect to see very similar results, um, and then um, uh, then we match up the topics to the pages. The matching of topics to pages is typically using um, uh, the yeah the metadata uh, from from the page uh, to trying to work out. Uh, what is that page meant to be about? Uh, you could use content, uh, but um, uh, yeah, so, so content tells you a lot about the page, uh, but we think often um, the metadata is, is kind of more important in trying to work out what the topic of the page is, um, especially for the kind of sites that we're mostly dealing with, uh, like marketplaces uh, and affiliate sites and um, classified sites, then you have a lot of listing results pages. And those listing results pages are about I don't know, Audi A3s from 2016 in London, right? So um, I was waiting and then for you, can... you to do your Audi A3 example. I knew it was coming. It, it, it has to be, right? But I think you need a go-to in everything, right? So I, I could, yeah. um, like, uh, uh, before I started doing the Audi A3 examples, then I would always talk about a kind of mid air, which is a yeah. kind of little um, uh, kind of clutch. Uh, but then I found for, for, interestingly, that a lot of people just don't know what mid airs are. But Audi A3s, are, they're, they're there, so it's, it's really easy. Um, but so, so that page, it will have a, a bunch of Audi A3s on. Interestingly, um, uh, what you often see for on-site search is it kind of relaxes uh, precision in order to focus on recall because it thinks that's going to give you um, uh, a higher conversion. Uh, and so a lot of the uh, on-site search stack is built around conversion, not around acquisition. Well, it's actually from a from the user acquisition point of view, you, you kind of wanted to say, hey, we have no results um, if they don't have any results rather than showing crappy results. Um, on big sites, you also see search and dicing solutions that, that do other things. Um, maybe there's other paid ads that are added in, sponsored listings, which are again kind of crappy. Um, but um, and so it's kind of um, yeah, uh, uh, so what we're trying to do is uh, get an understanding of how relevant the listings are on the page to how somebody would look for that from Google. Um, but then, so uh, you can do that if you work out the topic, you can work out work out what the, the canonical keyword is for, for the topic or the most intuitive, the most representative way of searching for that topic. And then you could look at how many of those listings actually match up to that. Um, so we, we've got these topics, we've got keywords, we've got topics, we're matching them to pages. Um, and then we've got kind of the full end-to-end um, -end flow um, that uh, we're using search volume from the keywords, right? But what we're trying to do is also um, uh, a lot of the, the uh, keywords that you'll see that come in from Search Console, as an example, are misspelled. Uh, so we need a way of, of uh, working out which ones are misspelled um, and removing those. Uh, a lot of those um, you get from competitive keywords include uh, reorderings of those keywords. So uh, the same word, uh, same query, but with a different order of words. Um, and often, um, uh, yeah, keyword, keyword tools will give you the same search volume for all of those. Uh, so if you added that up, you get a, a massively bigger demand. So um, we have ways of uh, kind of cleaning that up uh, automatically. Um, and then, then you want to do it for all the pages on the site. And what you find is that probably, I don't know, 40, 50, 60% of the pages don't match up to things that people are looking for. Um, so there aren't, they just don't have demand, right? And probably another 10, 20, 30% of pages are duplicates. Um, depending on how the site creates category pages, uh, th those numbers kind of differ. 
Um, and then you have 10 or 20% of the pages left over, which either have traffic or have demand um, and have relevant listings, right? And there's probably another 10 or 20% on top, which are new pages for which competitors rank. They have listings, but they don't have a page today for which you could create a page. Um, there right. is so much to unpack in that answer, Robin. So like there were several it's, points along the way. It's easy, we'll just skip over it. I know, but if we had like 17 hours to talk, I feel like that's how long it would take to get through it all. So <laughs> what I'm hearing is that metadata includes lots of stacked entities and those stacked entities give you a really good insight into what the topic of the page is. And that you're thinking so of topics yeah, as is... linked to entities because all those listing yeah. pages are like brand model, whatever. Yeah, but so you can you can definitely represent it as, as that, but you can also just look at uh, look at those things as as strings. You can say, here's a URL, here's a header, here's a title, right? And um, uh, these are the bits of those strings that are, are typically representative. These are the bits that are, are effectively templated. So we on boilerplate, we can ignore those, uh, like like I think any search engine does, right? So yeah. the reason you ignore uh, boilerplate or templated content is because it's just repeated on every page. It doesn't give you much information. So you can strip those out and you can look at that and you can use that to match to the topics. It definitely, um, so the way that sites express topics is different than the way that people look for uh, um, uh, things on Google. Um, and so that mismatch is uh, where it gets hard and also where it gets interesting. Because if you if you inadvertently mismatch, then you might say, "Hey, this page has uh, doesn't match up to any keywords, and therefore it doesn't have demand, uh, uh, even though it's just yeah, it's it's not working." And there are lots of ways in which uh, sites express so sites have compositional categories where they say, um, "Yeah, there's a site I remember. Um, I, I won't name them, but um, so it's a classified site, and they had um, um, fire extinguishers." and uh, safes that you use for keeping things that, to, to be safe from fires. Uh, so this was a, um, in, a, in another language, but that was a category. Uh, and so they had all these listings for fire extingu extinguishers and, and also the things you use to keep them safe from fires. Um, and yeah, it was just a mishmash of, of, of different listings. N nobody is looking for that category on Google. They might look for fire extinguishers and they might possibly look for a safe that keeps things safe from, uh, from fires, although uh, I don't think we have that concept in English. Um, but then, um, yeah, uh, they're not looking for both of those, but it's a single category. So that kind of compositional category, it's very common on, on classified sites, but it kind of, yeah, it's hard to work out how, and some of them rank, uh, but typically for a single um, a single uh, uh, query, uh, right? And, um, and another example, we have uh, a site that has cars, vans, and motorbikes. And that's one of their, their categories, right? But sometimes it's ranking for cars and sometimes it's ranking for vans and sometimes it's ranking for motorbikes. Um, so it's kind of, um, so matching those things up is, is, is quite a hard problem. Uh, but then, so we've been spending um, a few years uh, building technology to, to match pages to, uh, to, to topics and match pages to queries. Okay. Uh, another thing to unpack trying to learn a, a, a vertical, coming up with a few million keywords, uh, and then breaking that into topics. Uh, how, how many topics are we talking about? Are we talking about tens of thousands? Are we talking about a thousand, a hundred? I mean, yeah, and then so how I, do I we think... understand the revenue potential of these? Like, how are you thinking through the Pareto principle of like which ones to attack? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I guess I guess we we haven't uh, been great at the at Pareto principle stuff and we just took them all. Um, but then uh, we, so typically it's it's like a, a million or a few million keywords, so a million in yeah. European countries and, and a few million in the US. Um, and then topics is typically um, uh, something like 50,000 uh, topics would be typical. But for some um, some big, um, we call them verticals, but big kind of domains like like fashion in the US, maybe two hundred thousand topics, um, uh, and then um, uh, and and that kind of matches up if you look at the the typical number of active pages for some of the big marketplaces. 
it's, it's something of that order. Um, uh, so uh, it might be 30 or 40 or 50,000 pages. Uh, and effectively, most of those pages match up to a topic. Um, and and that you can't go um, to most, a lot of big marketplaces are inventory constrained. So there are a bunch of topics that they have no right trying to rank for because they don't have any, uh, they don't have any inventory, don't have any products or listings that match to that. Um, but if you have a, a lot of the inventory, like so there are some sites in the UK or in the US that basically have all the makes and models and years of cars going back for uh, goodness knows how long. And so they could potentially rank for all of those uh, from an inventory perspective. Uh, but obviously, so what I kind of glossed over and I, I didn't mention is that inventory for a lot of these sites um, might change. Um, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40% of inventory might change every month. Uh, so some of them are, have a much higher turnover than others. Um, search volume is changing every month. Um, keywords are changing every month. Topics, uh, how those are clustered, are changing uh, as Google updates all those things. So it's a very dynamic kind of landscape. And so part of the reason we're building this as a end-to-end -end programmatic uh, um, platform is that it, uh, we want to keep it up to date over time. Um, so it isn't just a one-off, um, we'll get the keywords, we'll cluster them, and then we'll work out which pages to create or, or how to dedupe or something. We want to get to the, there's certainly a big cleanup in the beginning, um, and we want to link out to the right pages. But over time, like there's going to be a spike in demand. Uh, the, we want the site to reflect that. We want that to be uh, the site to remain user-centric, even though uh, our collective understanding of what is intuitive to users, which is like all the search volumes across all the topics, changes over time. Wow. Okay, I feel like, you know what's amazing, Jordan, is two years ago, we would have had this conversation and about 60% of what he just said would have just gone. <sighs> and I, I feel like I finally get everything that he's talking about. It's amazing. Uh, okay. But, so it's not, it's, not, um, it's not easy, but it is quite yeah. simple. Right, so, so effectively, so when, when people ask us about like, what do you do? And it's like a black box AI that works out how to kind of trick Google. And we're like, no, like we're just trying to work out how to market products to people, right? Uh, and so should we use all the categories that the site has um, or should we, um, should we match up those, those products to how people search, right? And that's what search engine marketing is all about, right? Um, and, but then we just want to do it for, uh, be able to do it for any site. Uh, and so the sites we're starting with, I mean, I'd love to be able to do this at literally any site and kind of completely um, democratize this, but the sites we're starting with are just the sites that currently really struggle to be able to do SEO at the scale uh, that they, they're at. Um, but it's, it's not like, uh, it's definitely not easy, but it's kind of, it's not really, uh, it's, it's kind of simple, uh, what the, the problem we're, we're tackling. Seems like, I mean, what I've learned in, in my experience of building tooling around uh, SEO and SEO data, it's get data, clean data, analyze data, make decisions, and then turn the crank over and over again, and then track the impact of, of, of your results. But so much of that decision-making and building the tooling is, you know, looking at all of the component parts can I trust this? Can I trust this? Can I, you know, like looking at each piece yeah. of the tool and each piece of the data to understand like, is the foundation solid? You know, part of what you said was uh, we get, we're integrated with SEMrush API for keyword data. We also get keywords from Keyword Planner and we get search volume from Keyword Planner. Like when, when SEOs who build SEO tooling hang out and I would assume drink whiskey or something, you know, they're like shaking the glass, like, where do you get your search volume data? <laughs> and it's like the most foundational, almost most important thing to understand opportunity. And, you know, the more I've learned, I, I would love to hear what your perspective is on, on this concept. Sorry, I'm tangent, I'm shifting. Uh, the more I know, the less I know, right? Like the more I know, the more directional everything feels. And I think that the vast majority of SEOs don't understand where their data comes from. 
for any of the third-party tools that they're using, or even from Google Search Console, and they make decisions based on the data, assuming that it's accurate. And the more I've I've like spent time building things, the more I know that it's all sampled and it's all directional at best. And so I wonder kind of like how you deal with that concept of maybe truth is a broomstick and your hands are always going up towards absolute truth, but the broomstick keeps extending up infinitely. So you can never get there. You can have more knowledge to make decisions, but not absolute truth. So I I don't know, like you're building some crazy infrastructure around this. So I think that, uh, I think it's a great question. Uh, it's a great direction to, to think in. Uh, so uh, by the way, we, we're uh, typically not getting stuff from Keyword, Keyword Planner with where the search volumes are coming from uh, from SEMrush. Um, yeah. But um, uh, we have Search Console data and we have a, um, a lot of Search Console data. Um, yeah. And uh, we definitely look at, we've looked at how we can use uh, impressions from Search Console to kind of ameliorate the, the data we're getting from SEMrush. Um, but uh, but I think um, uh, so I think if it a bit like so I'm a one of my uh, uh, passions obsessions uh, so I have a, a number of very narrow kind of uh, obsessions uh, but it's uh, philo- uh, the philosophy of science um, yeah. and and so uh, I, I think a lot of SEO is not really uh, about um, uh, disproving the um, the null hypothesis and and coming up with incontrovertible scientific uh, uh, proof. It's engineering. It's building shit that works, right? right? And and I think I think it's a much better kind of a framing. Um, it, it's uh, so if you're doing A/B experimentation for for internal linking, you you do, it's going to be hard to prove that this is this this intervention definitely did this. Uh, but if every internal linking experiment you do shows that um, active pages goes up by a certain percentage, uh, and it does it on all kinds of different sites, and you're using the same we call it the same recipe, the same uh, template uh, of internal linking uh, across all of those, and you get consistent results. Uh, you can probably assume it's going to work on on uh, lots of other sites, um, yeah. and, uh, and uh, like until it doesn't, and then that's interesting, and you can look into why. Um, but so I, I think it's more it's more about finding finding stuff that works repeatedly, um, and 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 working out how to to make that work. Um, lots of indeed. Some of the search volumes will be wrong. Some of the stuff will be out of date. Uh, some of the matching might not work flawlessly. Um, uh, the, it's very large scale. But the uh, most of the in-house product managers we, we talk to, the in-house SEOs, uh, if they want to clean up a site that's got 100 million pages, of which they think 3 million pages uh, um, either do the heavy lifting today or should tomorrow, um, yeah, it, it's kind of, it, it, it's, uh, it's brass tacks. It's not it's not super sophisticated stuff. You just want to um, you, you kind of default to most of these pages are going to be useless, um, and then you want to focus on the things that we really do know good things about. Um, but but it's definitely I think the problem the hardest bit is is kind of where you miss data but you didn't realize you missed data, um, uh, and so mm-hmm. you just uh, you miss data but you just assume that it's not um, that uh, that doesn't exist but it's actually about your source hasn't given you a, a complete view of what's going on. So incomplete views are typical for SEO. Um, but it, it's, it's a bit like the five blind men feeling an elephant, right? So it's kind of hard to, to look at Search Console and compare that to SEO Rush because um, Search Console um, estimates of traffic are going to be wildly different from SEO Rush, but they both contain a bit of truth. Um, and... Um, um, and in that case, Search Console probably contains a bit more truth. Uh, but um, but like um, Google Analytics is going to be useful as well. Uh, but it's again, it has flaws. Um, and there are lots of things you can look at if you're comparing analytics data to Search Console data. They won't match up. Um, but you, you kind of know some of the reasons why they don't. Uh, so I, I think looking at both and, and expecting both to be wrong but useful um, is, is, a, is a more kind of useful lens than trying to know what is what is perfect knowledge uh, because that's yeah that's going to be tough to get recently i've been building i want to get to the search console conversation that we had before we started the taping because i think that's pretty juicy why don't we why don't we shift there probably, um, probably we're going to have like five minutes but what i have to do is invent five minutes of fluff 
you'll have to jump off to the, to the thing you have to do. And we're going to, next time, we're going to tell you the real <laughs> no, man. Or your no, there's no, there. there's no extended, there's it's, no extemporaneous soliloquies here. I, we, I'm we, feeling, I'm feeling like this is like the, uh, the, the meta description and all we need is like a, a curiosity hook right at the end where it kind of says like, yeah. you could read more about this or we could tell you the real secret of how we. <laughs> Dude, you're doing it to us right Click now. here. Yeah. You're doing it to us. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. It's a meta. It's a uh, meta conversation. What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Strangely. Search console. So about a year ago, Robin wanted to do a Zoom with me. And he specifically wanted to talk about, so let's say you have a big site and you want to get all the data. How do you understand how to get all the data? And so we've both gone our separate ways and tried to attack the same problem with different results. Uh, in my testing, I found that anywhere from 30 to 80% of the click data that you see across the top of the performance tab is sampled out. And it's sampled out for a number of reasons. If it's super low search volume, if it, take, if it means that the API response is gonna take an unacceptably long amount of time to return data, or if there's PII inside the underlying data, it'll all get sampled out. And so I know that sampling is real and I've talked to a lot of other SEOs that have uh, access to a significant, if not majority use of the Search Console API and are having similar results. So you said something that was relatively inflammatory before the call. No, I, maybe, maybe it was misunderstood. Nine but... point something percent of the data. And I was like, what? Tell us. So, so, uh, so I, I think, uh, so maybe we take it in, in kind of in, in three steps. So, yeah. so the first step, the step is, um, is there a, a, a consistently good way of knowing what the, uh, the sampling gap is or what the sampling rate is? Right, so um, so you can pull all the keywords you get back from from the Search Console, and yeah. you can add up all of the the impressions or add up all the clicks, and yeah. you could compare that to to the uh, what you get from the site property, um, right. and either in the UI or you can get that program pro programmatically as well, right? And yep. so that's what I would call the the gap. Yep. Um, uh, then um, uh, you can uh, add deeper um, uh, properties, um, yep. and adding deeper properties um, uh, reduces the gap, right? So let's say you're at the place where you've gone down, you've plumbed down to as many levels are, as are necessary so that every single day, you know that you're getting less than 50,000. So for everybody at home, there's a 50,000 rows of data per day uh, API row row limit in place. So if I have a property at the website level, I can only get 50,000 rows for that API response for that day's worth of data. So let's say you go down whatever number of levels are deep enough so that every single property gets less than 50,000 rows of data. My argument is that if you do a sum of all of that data, there's still a gap. There's still a gap. Yeah. So, the, right. the, so uh, I, I think there's, there are reasons where, where uh, you won't get literally everything. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so maybe my my earlier statement of ninety nine point nine 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 nine. Yeah, was I was like slightly dude. off. <laughs> dude. Uh, but so uh, I think it's more. Um, uh, so what we're thinking about is uh, what is the minimum number of properties that you could add to maximize. Uh, the data you get uh, and so the, to maximize the keywords you get uh, but it could be to maximize the impressions you get or to maximize the traffic you get um and so so that's that's one problem that we've been thinking about a lot and the second one is um well maybe uh i don't know uh, it, it, if adding properties was less uh, hard uh maybe we just add all the properties um like properties for every folder uh turtles all the way down Right, and then if you did that, um, yeah, you probably hit other quota limits over time for pulling back all, all the data. Um, but if you keep on adding more uh, properties, uh, and I mean like thousands of properties, um, 
then um, uh, then how much data could you get? Uh, and so uh, I, I think I don't know of anybody who's tried that. Uh, do, do you know? Do you know people have done that? Uh, not to that extent. Although I know a few who have, like Eric Wu, has done some pretty dang extensive work in this area historically. Maybe I should go and talk to Eric. So uh, we're, we're um, uh, so uh, we're looking I mean, at how we do that. My, my Occam's razor approach to this is you basically set up the domain property. You then pull all the data in for the past 16 months. You then have uh, a table that you look at and it's split up by the website directories. And you look at the row counts for each of those directories. And that is a good guide to understand where the opportunity is. And you can basically set it up so you have like a, a visualization that shows the row count over time. And you go into each directory and look at the row counts. And if you see the ones that, are, that have like the big spikes, that would be like a good guide for understanding where you need to, to kind of drill so down. I think, I think that's, that's a great way. Um, so basically, it's a, to your earlier question, right? So you can't yeah. have complete knowledge, but you actually have different uh non-commensurate knowledge sources right so the things that can't be compared but they are talking about the same thing um, yeah. so you can't compare um google analytics data to gsc data because you're gonna you can see wildly different actual numbers uh, for, for say traffic but say that you were to rank all those folders by by traffic according to a different data source they should yeah. um the ranking should be the same even though the numbers are different Right. And so <laughs> I, I totally see so, what you're from, Robin. Yeah. So so if that wasn't so, maybe you just need to add a property there. Yeah. Because you're missing data. So if you so you could so apply that uh, and, and do that. And so the other thing you'd need if you were going to take that approach, I think is a, a way of, of adding a lot of properties if you wanted to. And, yeah. and like you're gonna get RSI if you do all that by hand. But I've heard that there are um, there are cool things nowadays that you can use to do that called computers. Uh. <laughs> oh man! So we got to wind it down here. Um, oftentimes, we like to end the show with just asking people what what causes are near and dear to folks' hearts. Is there anything that you want to sort of shed some light on? Wow. Uh... So I would, uh, so, so obviously there's, I think there's a cause that's uh, near and dear to, to lots of people's hearts right now. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, I, 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 I don't know where to start, uh, but I, I, would, I would say um, uh, um, uh, do something nice for somebody else who's not expecting it uh, for no reason. Um, and then um, that, would be, that would be my suggestion. But otherwise, I'd love to talk more about Search Console data, but, uh, but yeah. no, I, I think that's that's where I would end it. I think we should do another episode soon. Are you into it? That would be great. I'd, yeah, I'd, I would. Yeah. I would love to. I, I, I love having these. There's conversations. so much. No, for for folks at least not that... not at least when I'm not naked, right? But it's uh, yeah, otherwise it's hundred uh... percent. But like for folks back home, we've we've talked, I don't know, we've had 20 hours at least of conversations and mainly around AI and how it relates to SEO. And there's just so much there for us to talk about that we weren't able to get to today. Um, That's true. Totally amazing. Everybody, I want to thank you for another amazing episode of Agency Automators. Jordan, any parting thoughts, words? I No, I think you put it very well at the start of this conversation. I could honestly spend like the next 17 hours talking with Robin. It's super interesting stuff. Yeah. Super, super interesting. Crazy, crazy. Thank you, okay. I'm, I'm trying to work out Jordan behind you. You have like a little picture of, of um, are those like Tanukis or? So uh, that one right there is actually from an art gallery exhibition that my now wife and I went to as one of our first dates. 
Fantastic. What, what what does it depict? Are, like are those animals? Yeah, it's it's a bunch of penguins doing different things at a dinner party. Uh, it's it's pretty wild. That's great. I, Jordan I, I'm, is I'm super to, intentional. He goes on a date. I'm trying to work out the penguin. Yeah. He goes out on a date and he's like, scarfs the menu, takes it home, and frames it. This is when I knew I loved you. Boom on the wall. I, I right. feel we could ask the same question about the the, the kind of poop emoji or the uh, yeah. Uh, so what? what yeah, I, 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 I want to say AK forty seven, but it's not an AK forty seven. What? What? It's a Star Wars. Um, the it's AK-AT an AT-AT. Kind of... I think it's called an AT AT. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Okay, this was amazing. Me. Thank you so this much, Robin. We really appreciate your time. We you know how busy you are, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Okay.